All right, folks, and this video is going to be a brief introduction to the geosciences. We're going to look at uh, what the science of geology looks at, what it investigates. Uh, we're going to explore the structure and the layers of our Earth. And we're going to discuss uh, Earth system science, the way of viewing the Earth as a dynamic system. So what is geology or, or geoscience, right? It's the study of our solid earth, the stu structure and substance that make it up, the processes that are involved in it, uh, and the history uh, of our planet as well, right? There are kind of three main sub-disciplines with lots of, you know, sub-sub-disciplines under each of these. The first is physical geology, and that's what this class is all about. Uh, if you continue on in the geosciences, you'll get to go to historical geology, right? So physical geology investigates uh, the physical structure of the earth, the processes that are involved, right? Historical geology investigates the history of our planet, how our planet has evolved and changed through time, the history of life on our planet, and the history of the discipline of geology itself. Uh, and then a third kind of discipline that has become huge in the last like 40 years or so since the 1970s is environmental geology. Uh, and this is a discipline that focuses on the interactions between humans and our geological environment, right? That's environmental anything is the interaction between humans and that uh, aspect environmental biology we look at interaction between humans and biology environmental geology we look at interaction between humans and the earth essentially positive and negative good and bad right so why would you want to study geology well first of all geology is omnipresent it's all around you all the time you don't even think about it right but it is right mineral and energy resources are huge right this is a big part of, of geology and geological exploration hazard mitigation this is what environmental geology deals with right as we experience you know flooding and 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 landslides and earthquakes and, and tornadoes and all that good stuff right uh how can we mitigate or 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 or, or dampen the effects of these, these natural hazards uh, against uh, 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 affecting us as humans, right? And of course, we are naturally just a curious species. We like to learn about the history of our planet, history of life, ourselves, all of that, right? And uh, you know, it's not a bad career to go in to make some money, especially the environmental field right now is just exploding, right? As we uh, uh, interact with more and more with our environment and screw things up here and there and need to fix things here and there, right? And need to mitigate between these ver various hazards, right? Uh, that environmental field is just exploding, right? Uh, I don't know how valid these, these, uh, estimates from glassdoor.com are but last year i looked it up and it said entry level geologists in the united states average sixty thousand and twenty nine dollars on average right so that's not a bad starting salary right now let's take a quick look at our planet itself right geology is a study of uh, our physical planet, right? And, and uh, so let's take a look at what it's made up of. And there's two different ways we can look at our planet. The first is compositional, or what is it composed of? The chemistry of our planet. Looking at it from this perspective, all right, there is the inner core. The inner core is solid, all right? I put these uh, distances here, but you don't really need to know these distances, just kind of know the relative uh, thickness, and but do know the order that they're in, right? So the inner core, the inner core is solid. It is made of iron and nickel, right? Moving out from there, we have the outer core. Now the outer core here is liquid, right? This is the only part of our earth that is truly liquid, and it is liquid, iron and nickel, with just a touch of oxygen and sulfur in it, right? Now, if it's basically the same composition or chemistry as the inner core, why do you think the outer core is liquid while the inner core is solid? Now, what think about what happens as you go deeper and deeper and deeper into our Earth, there's more and more and more stuff piled on top of you. 
uh, which means there's more and more pressure on you, right? So the inner core is under just a little bit more pressure because it's deeper than the outer core. The outer core is under a little bit less pressure and it allows, you know, because of the high temperatures down there, allows the iron and nickel to exist in a liquid form. And this uh, is, again, the only part of our earth that is truly a liquid. Next, we have this part here, this big red part, and that shouldn't be red because that always confuses people and makes it think it's a liquid, but this is our mantle. Our mantle is not a liquid. It is a solid, but its composition changes now. It has low amounts of silica, but higher amounts of magnesium and iron, and magnesium and iron, these are dense dense elements, right? So like a less dense element. And then on top of that, see it here, this very thin little skin of a candy coating of a shell right there, right? That is the crust. That is the part that we stand on, right? And this one has higher amounts of silica, lower amounts magnesium and iron, right? Iron and magnesium, again, being dense elements. Nickel being a very dense element, right? So compositionally or chemically, if we look at it, the outer one has high silica. Silica is kind of a lighter, less dense element, right? That's on the top. We get a little denser in the mantle. And then the, the core has our densest elements, right? The denser the element, the denser the right, increases towards the center of our earth and decreases on the outside. So our earth, when it formed, right, was basically kind of like a giant centrifuge. Well, actually, let's back up even a little bit. When our solar system formed, right, sun all the way out to, uh, uh, well, Neptune now, right, Pluto is a planetoid, whatever. Anyway, uh, from, uh, from our sun out, right, as, as, uh, uh, the, you know, the gas and rock and elements, you know, swirled around our sun, uh, that acted as a giant centrifuge as well. If you think about it, our rocky planets, right, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, these are closer to the sun, right? Our gaseous planets, starting with Jupiter, you know, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, right? Those are gaseous planets. So even our solar system formed as it was rotating, kind of like a giant centrifuge. Our planets did the same thing as well, including our Earth here. So as each of these kind of coalesced, right, we got uh, the denser ones would, would centrifuge towards the middle and lighter and lighter elements towards the surface, right? And density is huge. Density is very, very important in geology and very important when we go to plate tectonics, which we'll talk about in just a few minutes here, right? There is yet another way to break up the Earth, and this is in a structural manner, right? Looking at the Earth from a, a structure, or, or how does it function? How, how does it move? How does it interact, right? Uh, and this is just a little bit different here, right? So from the, the center, we have the same. We have the inner core, that's again solid, right? The outer core, right? Again, liquid, and uh, this is the only part of our our Earth that is truly liquid, but uh, in this, the structural uh, breakdown of our Earth, we take the mantle and the crust and divide those two up into three separate parts. The deepest of those parts we call the mesosphere. That's the lowest part of the mantle here. It is rigid, it is solid, right? Above that is what we call the asthenosphere. This is the upper part of that mantle, right? Partially molten, it is not a liquid, it is plasticky, right? Think flowing like plastic, right? Uh, very slow or taffy-like, right? But then on top of that, we have together, right? The uppermost part of the upper mantle, right? Plus the uh, the crust, now chemically they're distinct, right? The upper mantle, uppermost part of the upper mantle, uh, that's got a lot of iron and magnesium, whereas the crust has more silica, right? So it's less dense, right? This plasticky asthenosphere, right, acts then as a buoyant surface on which 
this upper part, the lithosphere rides. And these lithospheres, the, the lithosphere is broken into separate plates that kind of move around the earth, right? Um, then they contain both continental lithosphere and oceanic lithosphere. But this is uh, the reason we break up the layers of the earth in a structural format is this structure here is very important to the process of plate tectonics. So the asthenosphere, that plasticky, partially molten, uh, buoyant surface on which that less dense lithosphere rides, right? And again, density is everything to plate tectonics. So let's talk a little bit about earth system science. Earth system science is the science of viewing the earth as a dynamic system, right? Not a stagnant, right? Just always same, never changing, right? Uh, earth system science views, views all processes, natural processes are all interrelated, all, all connected, all interacting with each other and all in a constant state of change, right? And they interact with each other in very complex feedback systems. Not that we understand all of these, uh, or completely, of course, but uh, these feedback systems mean that, you know, perturbations or changes in one system cascade and, and affect and cause changes throughout other systems, which cause changes throughout other systems, may cause changes back to the first system, yada, 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 right? There are generally five components uh, uh, of the uh, of Earth system. First is the atmosphere, right? This is, of course, the air around us, right? We also have the hydrosphere, right? Which hydro means water. And uh, here they don't show the other one, but this is, we're going to call the hydrosphere. We're going to define that as all liquid water on the planet. And this is separate from the cryosphere, cryo, cryogenics, frozen. The cryosphere is all of our frozen ice and snow. And the reason we separate the hydrosphere from the cryosphere is ice and snow act completely different in our systems than water does, right? Liquid water is more mobile than ice and snow. Ice and snow act more like a rock that can cause a lot more different styles of erosion, right? Um, and uh, another thing it has to do with when we get to climate change at the end of this uh, semester, we'll learn all about albedo, right? So liquid water absorbs almost all the energy that hits it, where ice and snow being a white, highly reflective surface reflects a lot of the energy that hits it. And that's going to be huge to climate change, right? We also have now the biosphere. And this, of course, is, is all the plants, the animals, and all the critters. Uh, within the uh you know within the earth right and on the earth right and then of course we have the geosphere uh which is what we're going to be focusing mostly on in this class but you know as this kind of shows any event right that happens in the hydrosphere is going to affect you know climate atmosphere right they're all interrelated they're all connected they're all affecting each other right and we call this open and interacting like they're open to out uh, external inputs and sources right and they're all interacting with each other in a constant state of change right breaking down that geosphere a little bit right uh, we have the geosystems and these are specialized subsystems of earth system science right again just like everything else they can be considered to be open and interacting right and these include, one, the plate tectonic system, two, the geodynamo, which is a $10 word for Earth's magnetic sphere, and the climate system, right? And we'll be investigating these all individually, uh, but we'll look at them a little bit now just to, to kind of introduce you to them. First of all, the plate tectonic system, right? This is the seminal theory in geology. What do I mean by seminal theory? I mean, it's used to explain almost everything else in the geosciences, right? Why are these mountains here? Plate tectonics. Why are these earthquakes? Plate tectonics, right? That kind of stuff, right? In plate tectonics theory, the Earth's uh, surface is broken up, the lithosphere is broken up into lithospheric plates, right? These lithospheric plates move around and bump into each other and interact with each other at what we call plate boundaries, right? These are where the two plates meet, right? 
These are driven by three different forces, uh, mantle convection, ridge push, and slab pull. We'll discuss those more uh, in chapter three when we discuss plate tectonics. Right. Looking a little bit more at it, uh, again, that lithosphere is broken up to these large plates that move around over time. Right? These lithospheric plates are less dense than the underlying asthenosphere. Right? So they ride, if you will, on that plasticky asthenosphere. Here's a big ho uh, giant word here. Moharovic discontinuity, right? It's also known as the moho. That's this red line right here. And this is the separation between the asthenosphere and the lithosphere, right? And as we see, it's not always at the same level. And that's because our continental crusts, which are made out of granite, they're a little less dense than our oceanic crusts, right? But they're also thicker which means they ride higher, but they also have deeper roots, right? Our oceanic crust, uh, or lithosphere on the other hand, right, is denser and thinner, and it sits lower. And then in lab one, we'll uh, investigate this a little more, and why oceans are where they are, has all to do with this difference in density, right? Over time, these plates marked here by uh, this red line, right? These interact, they move around with each other, build mountains, right? Cause uh, collisions and earthquakes, all sorts of fun stuff, right? The geodynamo, right? The second part of our Earth subsystems, right? This is again, Earth's magnetic field, just a $10 word for Earth's magnetic field, right? It's produced in our outer core, right? Now remember, our outer core is the only part of our Earth that is truly liquid, it's liquid because it's under less pressure than the inner core. But as it is a liquid, it allows a rapid flow of this iron and nickel, which are good conductors, and creates essentially an electromagnetic shield that, that protects our Earth, right? This, uh, it's, you know, it's generated in the outer core, right? And then extends on, you know, past the surface of our Earth, right, out into space and eventually kind of dissipates out into nothing, right? Here's another kind of... Uh, uh, example of, of some of the magnetic fields around our Earth, right? Our geodynamo has an important job to do. It protects our biosphere from some very harmful incoming high-intensity solar radiation. It does basically act as a force field against some of this high-intensity radiation uh, in what's called, you know, a bow shock effect, right? And this radiation gets shielded and, and passed around the sides of our Earth. We still get, you know, some radiation. That's why we can see the sun. But, uh, uh, you know, a lot of that high-intensity radiation, which would often kill you know, uh, life if, if we didn't have that magnetic field. Right? So another part of the geodynamo or Earth's magnetic field is rocks can be become slightly magnetized as they form, especially volcanic rocks, right? So within a lot of rocks are these little iron minerals, right? Iron being a magnetic mineral, right? They act as little compasses. So let's say we have here, you know, hot magma, coming out of this vent here in the surface of the earth right and uh as as that magma in that magma are these little iron minerals right and as they're in a liquid they're acting kind of like a compass and they're pointing to where north was right and then when the rock cools that little compass iron mineral in there is is now frozen in time you know pointing forever to where north was when that rock formed, no matter how those plates move around our planet, right? And this can help us interpret uh, our geologic record. And we'll get to more of this a little bit when we uh, would talk plate tectonics as well, right? It's also important to know, and this can help us discover our record of, of Earth as well, that there have been magnetic uh, reversals in the history of our planet, right? And what is a magnetic reversal is what it sounds like. It's when North and South Pole actually flipped, right? And these don't seem to happen on any kind of regular time scale. Sometimes they're a couple hundred thousand years apart, sometimes a million and a half, sometimes, you know, 500,000, whatever, right? But what it tends to, it looks like it happens over, you know, a few thousand years, our, our, our uh, magnetic intensity shrinks, 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 flips, 
shrink, shrink, shrinks, flips, shrink, shrink, shrinks, flips, right? And this gets recorded in those rocks, right? So if what we call a reversal happens, so we call the, the now time, the normal time, so north is north, right? If we had rocks that were coming out during a reverse cycle, all the little compasses in there, those little iron minerals, would be pointing towards the south pole, right? And then the last part of our uh, our subsystem is the climate system, right? Again, just as any other of these systems, it's multidimensional, right? It's interacting uh, with all the other various parts. Uh, and parts of the climate system include, oh look, here they are again, these will become our friends, atmosphere, hydrosphere, geosphere, biosphere, and the cryosphere, the ice and snow, right? And again, all of these are open and interacting with each other, right? So what connections do we have climate and geology, right? So the climate impacts many geological processes, right? The climate of an area determines what type of weathering, how strong the weathering is, right? Controls a lot of flooding, mass wasting, which is the downhill movement of, you know, stuff on like landslides and, and debris flows and all that good stuff, right? Uh, but geologic processes can also affect the climate, so vice versa, right? Volcanism uh, has been known to change climate across the world for periods of years for, for large volcanic events, right? Plate tectonics, mountain building, right? This can affect air cir atmospheric circulation patterns, right? The position of the continents can, can affect, um, you know, how much light they receive and, and affect the climates, therefore, right? So there's all these different various connections right all right folks hope you enjoyed that see you next time